Hey, and thanks for checking out another video. In this video, I'll show you how to name type 2 ionic compounds. But let's look at first what are type 2 compounds. These compounds are made up of two types of elements. Remember we said before an ionic compound has a metal and a non-metal. But what we see now is type 2 compounds are made up of a metal from groups 3 to 12 and 14, and they also consist of a non-metal. But the important piece to note is the metals here can have more than one charge. So what do I mean by that? Well, I mean if I'm looking at a metal, something like, um, let's use copper as our example. Copper symbol is Cu. That can have a one plus charge sometimes, and it can also have a two plus charge. If you look on some periodic tables, you'll see a plus one and a plus two somewhere in the uh, cell for copper. And that just says that copper is multivalent. It has multiple potential charges. So the steps for naming these type two compounds, the very first thing you're going to do is write the name of the metal. And afterwards, you're going to follow the metal with a set of parentheses showing the charge on the metal. And how you do that, let's check that out down here. So you always use Roman numerals. So for Roman numerals, the symbol 1 is there. The symbol 2 is two lines, um, two vertical lines. The symbol 3 is, you guessed it, three vertical lines. The symbol 4, now this is a little bit where things go a little bit different. The symbol 4 is, the V represents 5, and the one line before that says that's 1 before 5, so this would be 4. The symbol 5, like I said, is a V, so let's use that. And the symbol 6 is going to be a V with a 1 afterwards. So these are the numbers 1 to 6 in Roman numerals. When you write those, though, um, like I said before, you're going to be writing them in a set of parentheses or brackets. So after every metal will come the metals charge or the charge on the cation and they'll always be expressed in Roman numerals with brackets like you can see there um, below. The charges of the metal and non-metal must balance for the amount of ions. Obviously they have to be equal to zero when you add them up. All right, so let's look at a few examples now. The first one I'll ask you to look at is FeCl3. So I always begin by identifying what my metal is. Here the metal is Fe. So I will go over and I will write that out. Fe is the metal. And I don't know what the charge is on that metal yet because it's multivalent. This is a type 2 ionic compound and it changes. I'm always going to use the non-metal, the anion, in this case chlorine, because that's always going to be um, a negative one charge since it's in group 17. So let's write that out here. Cl is always one minus. And in this example, I have three of them. I like to write out three. From here, I use a, a T chart of sorts where I need to figure out what the charge on the um, iron will be. So I take a chart and I just draw um, an X here. I say first, how many atoms of chlorine do I have? I have three. And each of those has a one minus charge. That would create a total charge on the negative side of three minus. And in, with iron, in the positives, the cations, I have one iron. And to balance out three minus, I have to make this a three plus. So that means that the charge on iron up here will be 3 plus. Then I go out, I have to name that. So what I'll do now is I will have to name that by writing, uh, let's use black, and I'll write it out here. I'm going to say very first thing is the metal in lowercase iron, followed by the charge that iron has one, two, three, since it's a three plus. Remember, that charge here represents the charge on the metal. And then what we'll do is we'll look at naming the anion or the non-metal, which in this example is 
chloride. So the answer that I'm looking for is iron three chloride. For the second example, I'll ask you to look at solving COF2. Remember the CO here is cobalt, since this is a lowercase o. So cobalt and fluorine are the two elements. Let's look at how we should name these properly. Again, the first thing that we do is we identify what the metal is. Here we're looking at cobalt. Um, so I'm going to write that out as CO. We don't know what its charge is because it's multivalent and it can change. For the nonmetal, we're looking at that being F2, so that's fluorine. When I write out fluorine, I know that its charge is always 1 minus. Um, for COF2, that means I have two fluorines here. And now let's look at identifying um, what the charge of cobalt will be. I always use this fancy chart. Not too fancy actually, um, but uh, this says we have two fluorines and each of them has a one minus charge. So the negative total will be two minus. I know that I have one cobalt and I know that whatever the charge is on this side, it has to balance out. In this case, it has to be two plus. And from here, I know that that is what the charge on cobalt will be. So we can write that up top as our ion charge. When I write out the name for this compound, I should call it lowercase cobalt 2 fluoride. So there you go. Try these questions down below. We're looking at naming SNCl4 and FBr3. I'll give you five seconds to pause this video. You can try them and then you can come back and I'll put the answers up. All right. So now we're going to look at the answers here. You should be able to see that SNCl4 is going to be tin 4 chloride. And FeBr3 is going to be iron 3 bromide. All right, so there's a video. I hope that that video helped you. Um, if you're struggling with some other chemistry stuff or you want some review, check out our other chemistry videos by clicking the chemistry playlist. Please give this video a thumbs up and let us know in the comments below video ideas that you'd like to see. And please subscribe to the How To Scholar for more how-to videos. Thanks for watching.